In this video, we're going to look at a method of solving simultaneous equations. And the word simultaneous means at the same time. Okay, so you are solving for two variables at the same time. That's basically what you are doing when you are solving a simultaneous equation. And sometimes simultaneous equations are also called a system of equations. Whenever you have more than one equation that you're trying to solve at the same time, we call it in mathematics a system of equations. And specifically today, we're going to look at what happens when one equation is linear. In other words, the variables are raised to a maximum of power of 1. And we're going to have a look where the second equation is quadratic. In other words, where the variables are raised to a maximum of a power of 2. What a solution to a set of equations does is it actually gives you the point of in the points of intersection. And the words intersection basically just means where they cross. So if you were to draw each of your functions as a graph, you would, solving the simultaneous equation actually tells you the points where the two graphs will cross each other. And because the one equation is going to be linear and the other one um, quadratic, we are going to be using the substitution method to solve the equations. And you can solve the equations either algebraically, which is how I'm going to show you how to do it now. So that's basically if you solve it in a formal way. And graphically would be if you draw accurate graphs of the two functions and you read off the points of intersection between the two graphs. Okay, so I'm sure you've done that before, but that is another method that you can use to solve graphs. It is not as accurate and some, sometimes they're solving it algebraically because oftentimes it's very difficult for us to draw a 100% accurate graph. But if you are using a computer software to draw your graphs, you can certainly then just read off the points of intersection. Okay, if we look at an example, we are asked here to solve for the variables. We are told that y is equal to x squared minus 6x. In other words, wherever I see a y in the second equation, I can replace it with x squared minus 6x. That's what it means to do a substitution. Okay, so if we just call these equation 1 and equation 2, we are going to take equation 1, because it's already got y as the subject of the equation, we're not going to need to rearrange that equation. We are simply going to substitute equation 1 into equation 2. So wherever I see a y, I'm going to replace it with x squared minus 6x, and the rest of the equation stays exactly as it is. And we can see that the advantage of doing that is that I now only have x's in my equation. I don't have um, two different variables because I can't solve an equation if I've got two variables. Okay, if we multiply this entire equation by 2 in order to get rid of the fraction. We will have 2x squared minus 12x plus x because a half times 2 is positive 1 minus 6 is equal to 0. And if we add the like terms there, the negative 12x and the 11x, we get negative 11x minus 6. That is a quadratic trinomial and it factorizes. The factors will be 2x plus 1 and x minus 6. So therefore, your values for x will be negative a half or positive 6. We were asked to solve for the variables here, not the variables. So we need to also find the corresponding y values. To do that, you substitute your x value back into the original equation. So you can actually substitute it into either equation. I'm going to substitute into equation 1 because it's going to give me the values straight away. And if you um, work that out on your calculator, you will get y to be 13 over 4. And if you substitute 6, you will have 6 squared minus 6 times 6. And that is equal to 0. So your solutions, if we just write them as ordered pairs, will be negative a half and 13 over 4. And here your solution will be 6 and 0. There is an example for you to try in your homework book, so please pause the video and try this example. Right, here in equation 1, it's not as straightforward because you weren't given an x or a y as the subject of the formula. So you need to choose, you need to work from equation 1, and you need to decide which variable you want to solve for. Now, if we solve for the, the x, 
we're going to have to divide everything by 2. And then I'm going to land up with a fraction. And that's not really going to be that easy for me to work with. So the easier thing to do here is to solve it for y and add 2x to both sides. Sometimes it's not possible to avoid getting fractions, but if you can, it's always a good idea to rather solve for the variable that's going to be the least work in the long term. So wherever I have a y in my equation, I'm going to replace it with 2x minus 4. So we will have x squared plus 2x minus 4 is equal to 4. Then if we tidy that up a little, 2x minus 4 and minus the 4 from the right hand side, and we're left with x squared plus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. That will then factor into x plus 4 and x minus 2. So therefore x is equal to negative 4 or x is equal to 2. We can now substitute the, those two values back into this equation. So y will be 2 times negative 4 minus 4, which gives you negative 12. And y will be 2 times 2 minus 4, which will give you 0. So your solutions as coordinate pairs will be negative 4 and negative 12 and 2 and 0.